Hi to everyone. Welcome to HMT YouTube channel. My name is Ashwi Rajesh, faculty with HMT. In this video, we'll discuss about 30 questions of uh, personal safety and social responsibilities, PSSR. We have earlier done a video for 30 questions, and this is part two of it. Let us see one by one with options and uh, which is the correct answer. First question, what is the spoken emergency signal over a VHF radio? First option is red alert. Second option, security. Third option, mayday. Last option, pan pan. Basically, they are asking, what is the emergency signal being used over the radio to indicate that your vessel is in uh, imminent danger. Let us see what are the options. Red alert, not the correct one. Security, no. Is it pan pan? No. The right option is uh, mayday. Mayday is a spoken emergency signal over radio and this has to be spoken three times in a distress call. Second question. When rescuing a person in a confined space, what is required to be considered safe to enter? First option is safety lights. Second option, eye protection. Third option, fire retardant gear. The last option, presence of oxygen. Let us see which is more important here. Is it only the safety lights? No. Protection for your uh, eyes? No. Fire retardant gear? Not exactly. And uh, yes, the right option is presence of oxygen, which is very much required for a person to enter into a confined space. Question number three. A negative attitude, inability to manage time, and low self-esteem are all due to one of the following factors that can add to personal stress. So this speaks about uh, the stress of uh, seafarers. Is it uh, the environmental factor given as number one option? Number two, emotional factors. Number three, community factors. And the last one, personality factors. Is it environmental factor alone? No. Emotional? No. Community factors, not exactly. And this, the right option is uh, personality factors, which can have an impact on the stress of a person. Question number four. High concentration of hydrogen sulfide, H2S gas, are most dangerous to personnel because they can. Option number one, cause involuntary skeletal muscle contractions. Number two, paralyze your breathing system. Number three, can cause eye inflammation. Last option, can cause uh, dizziness. Okay, involuntary skeletal muscle contraction. Not the right one. Causing eye inflammation? No. Dizziness? No. The right answer is, yes, it can paralyze the breathing system of a human when it is taken into eye concentration. Question number five. What must the watch standing engineer do periodically while on watch? First option, take routine rounds of the engine room. Option number two, stand is or a watch. Number three, Contact repairs of any damaged equipment. Last option, none of the above. Let us see which is the right one. Stranding is a watch is, is required, but not exactly the right option here. Contact repairs of any damaged equipment comes later. None of the above is also not the right option. So the right option will be taking regular rounds of the engine room during the watch keeping out. Yes, that's the right one. Question number six, what is the difference between listening and hearing? So both have got uh, a vast difference. Whatever comes to our ears, we call it as uh, hearing and whatever we concentrate and take into your mind, that is basically called as listening. So option number one says, listening is conscious and hearing is mechanical. Number two, listening is natural and hearing is physical. Number three, listening is mechanical and hearing is normal. Last option, listening is conscious and hearing is effortless. 
Let us see, is it uh, option number B? No. C, which says uh, listening is mechanical and hearing is normal? No. Is it D, listening is conscious and hearing is effortless? The right option is uh, option A, which says listening is conscious and hearing is mechanical. Question number seven. In live board situations, which of the following visual distress signal is acceptable for daylight use only? That is basically to attract the attention of uh, others, the rescuers. Let us see four options given here. First one, handheld red flaps. Number two, rocket parachute. Number three, orange smoke signals. Last option, red aerial stars. Let us see, is it handheld flare? No. Is it rocket parachute? No. Is it red aerial stars? No. The right option is, uh, is the orange smoke signal, which is considered as... Uh, Daylight use only. Next question, number eight. If you observe any situation which presents a safety or pollution hazard during fuel transfer operations on a mobile offshore drilling unit, what is your first action? First option, sound the fire alarm. Second option, shut down the transfer operation. Third option, notify the balance control operator. Last option, wait for the person in charge to act. Let us see the right option. Sound the fire alarm not the required immediate thing. Notify the ballast control operator can come later in the course of action. Wait for the person in charge to act, not exactly. Yes, the right option is shut down the transfer operation. That's what is required to be done immediately. Question number nine. The signal pan pan repeated thrice over the radio telephone indicates what type of message will follow. Options given, first one distress, Second one, safety. Third one, all clear. And the last option, urgency. Let us say, is it distress? No. We already discussed distress will be followed by the signal made. In. Is it uh, safety? No. Is it all clear? Not exactly. The right answer is urgency, which means that a person or a mobile unit is uh, in a state of danger which can escalate to a medical situation if uh, assistance is not provided. So that is where we use a signal urgency, which indicates safety of a mobile unit or safety of a person. Let us go for question number 10. In order to comply with safety policies and procedures, ship's crew and officers must, first option, minimize the use of alcohol on board. Second option, focus on delivering ship and uh, cargo at all costs. Third option, stop unsafe practices which may cause accidents, injury, or environmental uh, pollution. Let us see. Is it option A? No. Is it option B? Focus on delivering ship and cargo. The right option is the last option. Every crew on board should, should stop unsafe practices which may cause accidents, injury, or environmental uh, pollution. Okay, question number 11. We use gestures in our communication in order to convey a message and uh, dash ourselves. So what is that uh, dash is going to be? First option, is it uh, to impress? Second option, express. Third option, suppress. Last option, all of the above. So is it uh, required to impress anyone on board? Not exactly. So why we use uh, gestures in our communication? It's not to suppress any information. Definitely all of the above cannot be the right one. So the right option is to express what you are going to communicate. Question number 12. You tend to give lengthy explanations for simple things your message lacks. First option, conciseness. Second option, correctness. Third option, consistency. Last option, all of the above. Let us say, is it correctness? No. Consistency, not the right one. All of the above is also not the right option. So the right option is, uh, yes, lengthy explanations means it doesn't have a, a concise way of uh, delivering the information. Question number 13, which of the statements are correct? First option, use primary cells to be discarded. Option number two, use primary cells can be recharged. Option number three, use primary cells can be refilled and used. Okay, what is a primary cell which cannot be recharged? It's basically use and throw type. Secondary cells are rechargeable cells. So let us see 
what is the right option? It's not uh, correct. Use primary cells can be recharged. Option uh, C, use primary cells. It cannot be refilled and used. That's why it's not the right option. So the right option is use primary cells to be discarded after use. Question number 40. Most minor spills of oil products are caused by option number one, equipment failure. Number two, human error. Third option, major casualties. Last option, unforeseeable conditions. Let us see what causes most of the minor oil spills. Is it only equipment failure? Not exactly. Major casualties? No. Unforeseeable uh, conditions? Not the right one for this option. And yes, the right option is human error. Question number 15. Compared to oil tankers, chemical tankers are first option, more complex to operate. Second one, less complex to operate. Third one, as large as oil tankers. Last option, capable of carrying only one grade of oil. Let us see what is the right option. It is uh, less complex to operate, not exactly. As large as oil tankers is also not the right option. Capable of carrying only one grade oil, no. So they are uh, more complex to operate, that's the uh, right option when you compare to oil tankers. Yes, chemical tankers are more complex to operate because they can carry various grades of chemical in different tanks. Question number 16. What governs safe procedures at work? Option A, STCW. Second option, ISM code. Third option, Occupational Act. Last option, the Code of Safe Working Practices. Let us see which is the right option. STCW, no. ISM code, no. Occupational Act, no. The right option is the Code of Safe Working Practices. Number 17, what does the word radar mean? First option, radio direction and ranging. Second option, radio direction and ranging. Third option, radio direction and range. Last option, radium direction and ranging. Option B, not the right one. C, radio direction and range, not complete. Third option, radium direction and range is also not the right one. The right option is radio direction and uh, ranging. It's a very good equipment what we use on board ships for our safety of navigation. Question number 18. The problem of misunderstanding can be eliminated by providing dash to the clients while explaining the process. So what is the dash we are going to fill up? We have three options. First one, theory. Second one, sample. Third one, examples. Let us see, it's uh, theory alone, no. Sample, no. Yeah, right answer is examples. When you give examples, we can have an effective communication where the chances of misunderstanding could be easily overseen. <clears throat> Next question. Question number 19. When the scuppers are plugged and an oil spill occurs on deck, you should Option one, use absorbent materials such as sawdust to clean up the spill. Option two, remove the plugs from scuppers to allow the spill to run overboard and wipe the area dry with racks. Third option, remove scuppers and wash the fuel overboard with solvent. Last option, sound the general alarm. Let us see, is it uh, option number B? No. Option C, removing scuppers and wash the fuel, not exactly. Sounding the general emergency alarm, not required immediately. So what we are going to do is option A, use absorbent materials such as sawdust to clean up the oil spill. We are going to remove the scuppers or the plugs. Yes, the oil can leak overboard. Question number 20. How many annexes does International Convention for Prevention of Pollution from Ships, MARPO, have got? First option, is it free? Second option, is it four? Third option, eight. And the last option is six. As you see, first option, three, not the right one. Four, no. Eight, no. Last option, six is the right one. Marpole, I've got six annexes in total. Next question. In what ways interpersonal relationship can be improved within crew members? 
First option, good communication. Second option, understanding within each other. Third option, mutually helping out others. Last option is all of the above. Let us see, is it uh, alone with good communication? Yes, this is very much required while maintaining a good uh, personal relationships on board. Understanding definitely will add up uh, to this. Helping out others will definitely add up. And that's how you will see the last option. All of the above is the right one. Question number 22. Meteorological warning reports consist of one of the following. First option, iceberg movement information. Second option, floating debris. Third option, a vessel on fire or sinking. Last option, weather info or storm warnings, etc. So what is meteorological information? Basically, it speaks about uh, the weather. So iceberg movement is it's considered as a navigational hazard or a warning. Floating debris is a navigational uh, hazard. Vessel on fire or sinking is basically distress. So the right option is any information of uh, weather or storm warnings, cyclone warnings, etc., comes under meteorological warnings. Question number 23. What is the first action to be taken when you encounter an emergency situation? Option one, muster the crew in the designated area. Option two, sound the emergency alarm. Option three, try to fight the emergency on your own. Last option, wait for further instructions. Let us see. Mustering the crew in the designated area. Not exactly the right one for this. Number two, try to fight the emergency on your own. Not a right option as any individual cannot do this. Wait for further instructions. They come later. So the right option is in any emergency, we need to first sound the emergency alarm to alert the duty watch keepers and also all the crew on your vessel. Question number 24. Which of the following is correct, which is used to log all important radio communications on board? Yes, we need to log all the important radio communications on any ship, either a passenger ship or a cargo vessel. So what is the name of that logbook called as? First option, garbage record book. Yes, you can see, not the right one. Second option, is it a deck logbook? Engine logbook or GMDSS logbook. So deck logbook, not right. Engine logbook, we're going to use only the engine room uh, activities. So the right option is GMDSS logbook, which stands for Global Maritime Distress and Safety System logbook. Question number 25. Which of the following job on board requires a uh, artwork permit? Yes, a permit to work is definitely required for um, jobs which has got hazards. So, which requires artwork permit? Is it uh, option A, mopping deck? Option two, cutting or welding operations on deck. Number three, cooking in the galley. Last option says all of the above. So mopping deck, yes, it comes in the cold work category. So I don't want an artwork permit for that. Cooking in galley? No, it's a normal day-to-day -day operations what we carry out. All of the above is also not the right answer. So the right answer is carrying out any cutting or welding operations uh, on deck. Question number 26. As per STCW 2010, what is the variety of medical certificate of crew members? As we know, every crew member should be medically fit prior to joining a vessel. So medical tests and checkups are being carried out by the respective companies before the crew is uh, assigned a duty on board. So is it valid for one year as per the first option? Number two, two years, then three years and four years. So it is not uh, for one year, not three or not four years. The requirement is, yes, it should be valid for two years. That's the right option. Question number 27. Which is the most frequently abused drug in the entire world? Very important for seafarers. First option, is it cocaine? Second option, heroin. Third option, opiates. Last option says alcohol. So which is more frequently abused by uh, most of the people? Cocaine, no, not the right option. Number two, not right. Number three also, not correct. Why? The first three comes in uh, pure form of uh, drugs. The last option, alcohol, is what is most frequently abused drug in the entire world. Question number 28. 
What are the causes of uh, fatigue? Fatigue is tiredness, weariness that happens to crew on board because of various reasons. But we'll see what is given here. First option, is it uh, because of lack of sleep? Number two, stress. Number three, excessive workload. And you'll find the last option as all of the above. It's only lack of sleep? No. It's only stress? No. Both can add uh, definitely. And what about the third option, excessive workload? Can also lead to fatigue. So the right option is all of the above. Question number 29. ALARP stands for? We used to call it as ALARP. So what does it stands for? First option, alarm points on ships. Second option, all living areas and recreation places. Third option, as low as reasonably practicable. Last option, none of the above. So it is ALARP is uh, how we keep the risk to a minimum in uh, conducting any type of a job or operation in any working environment. So alarm points, no, not the right one. B, not right. None of the above is also not the correct option. So you can see the right option is as low as reasonably practicable. Coming to the last question, following is considered as a risk factor on board a ship. First option, water on a staircase. Second option, load suspended on a crane. Third option, both A and B are correct. Last option, none of the above. Let us see what is the right option. Is it not only the water on staircase? Why? Because it's, it's very much uh, uh, dangerous. People can slip and uh, fall, get injured. Load suspended on a crane. Yes, when a load is getting suspended on a crane and if it is in movement, crew are not supposed to cross that area, which is which should be definitely barricaded. Why? To avoid any accidents because of falling objects. So none of the above is not correct. The right option is both A and B are the correct options. Thank you very much once again. Please uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel if you have not done uh, earlier so that we can come out with uh, other videos on uh, whatever possible subjects we are dealing with. Thanks once again and uh, wishing you all uh, good luck.